Over and over I face a situation where the team is pressed to finish all the items in the sprint. Usually they have no sprint goal or there are so many goals that they remind list of all the stories of the sprint. Which basically means that no one knows why finishing all those items matters. Or perhaps they just assume they all matter equally since there is no prioritization. All in all, the management only considers a sprint a success if there is no spillover. Does it remind you of anything? Encouraging a feature factory perhaps? So let's see what can be a worse problem for the team and the company rather than a bunch of unfinished tasks. Join me today for myth number three, the spillover obsession. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's bust the myths together. Hi, I'm Maria and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome! After the myth number one and leaving the PO out of the team, we moved on to myth number two and obsessing about estimations. Today we are back with the myth number three, the spillover and the cardinal sin in Scrum. We will go through some anti-patterns and some dysfunctional behaviors that the spillover obsession provokes and then I will tell you a bit about what can we focus on instead, then I will give you some ideas of a bit more pragmatic approach to sprints. Let's start! So as always, let's start with some anti-patterns and here I can only think about the typical ones. One, the team must strive to finish all the items in the sprint. Two, spillover is bad, don't do spillover. Oh, I know another one. We haven't finished the story, but let's close it, wherever it is, even if it doesn't provide any value, and open a new one and put that new one in the new sprint. Oh, better yet, let's just do this with all the stories that haven't been finished. Just close them, leave them in the other sprint and open new ones for the new sprint. Do you see a pattern over the last two myths? The myth number two about the estimation obsession and the myth number three about the spillover obsession. Do you see something in common like misunderstanding, dogmatism and focusing on making the metrics happy as opposed to delivering value. Adding on top of that, the focus on finishing all the items in the sprint leads to some dysfunction. First of all is that the teams plan just enough to finish it in the sprint and that creates two things. One is that obviously there is slack time added for the team members because they don't want to just leave something open so they prefer to do nothing. And two, it's possible that the team will leave out some work that they don't think will fit in the sprint and since nothing is prioritized it might be some important work that is being left out just because they are afraid they won't finish it. It leads to the sprints being and the sprints and the planning being very conservative. It also means that there's no objective or priority of the tasks in the sprint because everything is just as equally important, which means nothing is important. Last but not least, the sprint review becomes focused on output as opposed to outcome and we need to go through all the stories and probably justify why some of them haven't been finished. Everything aside, this gets boring. How on earth do you think you will motivate the team to run an exciting next sprint? Am I saying that spillover is actually good? I don't want to be black and white and define whether spillover is bad or spillover is good. Spillover is a natural side effect of a sprint. Think about a dinner. If you cook dinner for a couple of people, do you worry about the leftovers? Is that the worst thing that can happen? Do you want to cook just for the right amount of people and have zero leftovers? Isn't it better to have leftovers than not having enough food for everyone? There are also many ways to deal with the leftovers, right? Would you ever obsess about cooking just enough or would you rather focus on making sure people are fed and they enjoy their food 
and the company, by the way. I asked the same question on LinkedIn. You can follow me on LinkedIn here and got a lot of answers about the importance of the spillover. And Eve puts it very nicely. He says spillovers can happen for some tickets. It can even be considered normal because they are less time critical. The most important thing is to add more value and collect feedback from the stakeholders. And I will also add from the customers, but too many spillovers might be a sign of a team working on too many items and it would be good to commit to less or set less ambitious sprint goals. Huh. And an interesting one, spillovers can also happen when the scrum police defines how many points have to be committed per sprint. That sometimes happens. And Willem adds a point to it saying that it's better to have spillovers than have broken features and he gives uh, an alternative to the leftovers as we said don't just automatically pull them into next sprint sprint review may prove them outdated or insignificant or maybe priorities have changed let the new goal lead your next sprint not the leftovers i love that so what about the value isn't it hard to know what to focus on if you're not given a direction a goal, a sprint goal. That's really, again, where we should be putting our attention to. Have a goal. If your company has OKRs, there should be a sprint goal for each sprint that we know what is the most important thing we want to achieve with the achievement of the sprint, right? We already spoke about it. And you can also watch my interview with Martin Dahlmein about sprint goals. And soon his book on sprint goals will be released. I can't wait to have it in my hands. So let's remember how important it is to actually achieve something. And now, of course, I asked on LinkedIn about the spillover obsession and got some very nice, interesting views. The only measure of any importance in the sprint is value delivered. Value delivery over successful sprints. Forget the PBIs. Did you achieve the goal? As soon as you do that, the sprint is successful. I'd argue that the sprint success is measured by the delight on the customer's face and not upon the items that have been completed and so on and so forth. And I know what you're thinking right now. What about the team predictability, right? That would be one of the most important goals of the delivery teams, of the product team. Prediction can change based on the circumstances. So it's better to be adaptable than on time. Of course, we want to get to a certain level of predictability but with the teams, especially if there are new teams and we want to set them on track. It definitely helps with the planning, but I would just advise against putting that, the predictability, as the main objective of the teams. The main focus and objective of the teams should be to deliver value and understand the customer needs and perspective, not obsessing over deadlines. To give it a little spin, what if we deliver early? Is that bad either? Because we missed the deadline, we just delivered before the deadline. And that's all for today. I hope you can see a bit of an irony in this pursuit of leaving no leftover in the sprint and how many anti-patterns and dysfunctional behaviors can come out of this one goal. And this is also true for many metrics and anything that we already talked about in the other myth. We shouldn't have just one metric or just one goal that we are looking at because it may lead to changing behaviors of the teams and not necessarily in the way that we want it to be. I hope this gives you a little different perspective on what the spillover is and what can we do and how to handle it and what can we do instead to make sure that we have successful sprints. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.